हेलो कोडर्स मेनो डे बाइट स्कूल डे ट्वेंटी टू सेशन ऑफ मास्टरिंग स्प्रिंग बुल सो इन दिस सेशन वी फोकसिंग ऑन अ स्प्रिंग सिक्योरिटी कंसेप्ट ओके सो वी डूइंग ऑथेंटिकेशन एंड ऑथराइजेशन यूजिंग अ जे डब्ल्यू टी टोकनाइजेशन ओके विद द हेल्प ऑफ स्प्रिंग सिक्योरिटी इन अवर स्प्रिंग बुट एप्लीकेशन ओके सो इफ यू आर न्यू टू अवर चैनल आई हाईली सजेस्ट यू सब्सक्राइब टू अवर चैनल एंड क्लिक ऑन बेल आइकॉन सो वेन एवर वी अपलोड अ न्यू वीडियो यू गेट अ नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ दैट ओके सो इन प्रीवियस टू वीडियोज वी डन विद लाइक लॉग इन रजिस्ट्रेशन and after that we done with email verification by using email configuration and send a email verification link to a user mail id okay so if you not yet wa watch that video i highly suggest you to check that uh, first video and jump over here okay so this concept is very huge so maybe uh, the, uh, our video will be stretched till like a uh, 10 minutes to 15 maybe 20 minutes okay i suggest you to don't skip any section okay and watch th this video till end okay we will try to cover each and everything okay so uh, further wasting a time let's get started okay so uh, in uh, our uh, i think second or third video we discussed that like uh, when user uh, need to create any blog or user need to add any comment okay so first we need to user need to perform a logging operation okay so add apis and a uh, create blog apis are authorized api no one can directly access that but uh, like get uh, get blocks api are a public api anyone can access that okay so with the authorized uh, our uh, add or uh, add comment api or add or update blog api okay so for that we, we are using spring security okay so i will tell you the simple flow how uh, spring security work okay so in normal flow whenever uh, you uh, send a request to any particular api first it is go to a dispatcher servlet okay just imagine it is main controller and this main dispatcher servlet decide to uh, uh, route our request to our uh, specific uh, api controller for example when you hitting a blog uh, api like create a blog api first it is get to go to dispatcher servlet and that dispatch servlet decide like we need to uh, call a uh, get blog api okay uh, and in a spring security flow what happen first it is hit on delegate filter proxy okay so delegate filter proxy checking like uh, all those a uh, token token uh, of jwt is valid or not okay then if it is valid uh, that is expire or not then it is a uh, a uh, give request to dispatcher servlet and then dispatcher servlet a uh, give request to a controller okay so the middleware over there which is delegate filter proxy to perform all those authentication and authorization operation okay so this is overall flow okay so let's understand a jw token okay so jw token basically divide in a uh, three parts okay so first contain uh, the header information okay so header information basically what type of tokenization we are using so here we are using jwt uh, then what are the algorithm we are using here we are using hsa256 then payload contain uh, the original data so uh, we need to communicate with uh, means uh, basically um, uh, the front end android api or a web application communicate with the back end api so to communicate with each other we uh use one token okay that is a jwt so uh basically this is a you can imagine that this is a public key that we are using to communicate with each other uh to validation okay so authentication will be performed with respect to that and authorization also perform i will explain the whole stuff in a code okay so the payload contain a data like data like username then uh whatever uh you that particular user have Uh, how many access to particular portal for example admin have limited access okay super admin all have all access to a portal or user have specific uh, access to particular uh, portals okay so we can define in this okay then verify signature is uh, section is used to verify the particular token okay so that are the three section present in jwt okay it's it's just a public key which is used in a two medium okay so uh, here multiple algorithms over there we are using sha256 okay so let's uh, jump to our main part of our implementation okay 
so uh, first uh, to enable a spring security in a uh, spring boot application uh, in a pom dot file okay we need to add a uh, four dependency okay uh, first is uh, spring security spring boot shadow dot security okay then this three dependency j j w api then j w t implementation j w jackson okay that is required for j w t configuration all the stuff then spring security test over there it is not mandatory but if if you want to test the whole flow and all you can use this spring security test dependency okay so this is all about adding a dependency to a system okay so in a previous video uh, we perform a logging and a registration operation okay so for that what we are doing we directly save the plain password in our database so that is not best practice so here i am using bcrypt encoding password encoding okay so bcrypt is the one of the hashing algorithm okay so it is use a sorting technique okay internally okay and uh, save encrypt the your password and store in a database so due to using hashing techniques uh, uh, with a sorting mechanism so we prevent a brute force attack okay so i save the password using encryption okay after that uh, one more thing over there uh, like i implement load by username method we will using in a spring security uh, uh, configuration class i will mention over there this method is just uh, taking uh, the user details from the database and just load that okay so after that uh, one of the important cl class uh, which is jwt service okay so what jwt service is uh, class is doing it contain all those utility method which we are using for example uh, one method is basically generating token okay so here one uh, create token over there which is uh, calling by generate token contain uh, what what are the headers uh, like what are the algorithm we are using type of uh, tokenization we are using with that uh, what what is expire uh, accession time okay so we can expire our jwt with particular time period okay depend on a business requirement if you want to expire that jwt after five minutes or ten minutes you can expire that okay after one day also so here we uh, mention the expiration time then when we issue that uh, token okay then we sign that to 56 algorithm okay then here a uh, generate a sign key over there which is use over here okay uh, doing all those base 64 uh, stuff okay after that we are, we are doing valid token so whenever any user request particular uh, with username and token we validate that then we checking the token is expired or not okay then uh, we extracting all claims okay then we extract uh, that token is expire or not details okay then we extract the username okay the secret key over there which is uh, used to uh, generate a jw token okay so secret key is nothing but a private key okay which we are using okay so yeah that's it about jw service okay and one more class i created which is jw auth filter okay so jw auth filter basically what exactly is doing so one per uh, I extend with one per request filter. So each and every request uh, I am checking this means in header we are passing the token. Okay. So uh, the header is basically uh, keys authorization with that token we are passing. Okay. With barrier. So uh, basically what I am doing here I fetching the user details. Okay. With respect to that. And I am checking like uh, that user is valid or not. That token is valid or not. If it is valid, okay, do one thing, get spring uh, security contacts folder and get a contacts, okay, and then set that particular request as an authorized request, okay. So here you're checking that uh, set authorized as a true, I'm doing, okay. So uh, this is about like JWT utils and checking particular token, it's valid or not, okay. So main class is uh, spring security configuration, which this is main part. So uh, whatever I mentioned in our delegate uh, filter proxy over there, okay. So the code implement over here, okay. So basically, <clears throat> some of the request which is a pre-logging request that we don't need to authorize. For example, verify email ID over there, which is not require authentication, okay. Then logging over there, then register over there, that is not required. Then Swagger documentation over there, okay. So that reason what I what I did over there in spring uh, filter chain okay 
what I'm saying, whatever request coming from this URLs, just permit all. Okay, don't check token and all the stuff. Okay, and the request come either than all those list. Okay, just authorize all request. Okay, then here a password encoding method over there, which is used by BigQuery password encoding and all the stuff or authentication manager over there, which is we are using in a controller level. Okay, so then uh, one more important class over there, which is user info detail service okay whatever user uh, we are so, uh, storing in a database so spring security give us lots of feature uh, with that okay we don't need to think on logic okay uh, we define expiration uh, logic how we define the user active or not of uh, logic okay so here when you implement that with user details so user details come from a uh, spring se uh, framework security code dot user details okay so it contain all those uh, methods we override that like is user is enable or not is credential is not expire or not okay user account block or not okay so we are not implement that whole stuff in uh, our project we just that reason i just returning a true over there okay so if you want to implement that in your project okay what you are doing when you uh, storing uh, the user in a, a database uh, you take the all variables okay uh and create all these columns in your database and update that with respect to um your business logic so uh, if you want to implement is enable logic so uh, you just take one boolean flag in a database and take one boolean variable in user entity and just set over here okay so what exactly we are using over here we are like getting password okay we setting authorized details okay over here so what we are doing uh, from user we are taking username okay and then password and whatever role that particular user have so we define multiple role like for example user normal user or their role hyphen user then role hyphen admin role hyphen super admin so they have their own access to particular apis okay we define all those configuration okay so here we loading the all those stuff okay so i show you the controller uh, lo in logging what exactly i'm uh, doing okay so uh, in controller uh, class user controller okay so whenever user successfully logging to a system whenever we hit a control api okay uh, let me uh, uh, go click on logging uh, implementation okay so here what i'm uh, doing we checking the user details and checking that user present or not if it's not present we are sending user not present in system after that uh, we checking like uh, uh, if user is present the user uh, account is uh, verify or not okay if it is verify just return that user okay after that in controller what i am checking i using authentication uh, over there and authentication manager over there which we implement in spring security so this authentication manager provide you inbuilt authenticate method okay so that method uh, uh, what we are doing we just auth authenticate our username and password okay so like for example we are taking logging a user request from request dto we getting like username and then password okay so uh, we take this authenticate object and we check that like is authenticate or not if it is true means uh, the user is authenticate and if it is false is means user is not authenticate if it is not authenticate we throwing an exception authenticate fail exception and returning that password is incorrect okay and if it is authenticate, um, then we create a token, okay, by using the username and returning that token, okay. So this is the overall flow, okay. So first, let's start our system. Uh, click on um, start, okay. Okay. So let's jump to a Postman and hit our all APIs and check like uh, that working fine or not with respect to our business logic, okay so here logging api over there i create a dummy user which is uh, test one at devbytesfull.com with password as a test okay just click on a send okay then okay so it gives successful response like a uh, user logging successfully and returning that token okay so uh, we just need to use that token just copy that stuff okay and um, here in uh, one api over there which is a create blog api okay and this api is authorized api no one can directly access that we need token for this so if i remove that authorization uh, uh, from a header token and we try to hit that particular api 
so we get a 403 uh, status score forbidden okay so we need a token for this okay so when we provide a token okay in a header okay let's uh, enable this again and provide uh, this whole token and uh, send the request again so the blog is uh, saved successfully and we get a success response so our logic working fine okay so this is the authentication flow where we authenticate a particular api with respect to jw token okay so in authorization flow i will sh uh, show you the dto over here so in registration user request dto so when we perform registration operation here we take a roles over there so one user may have multiple roles like normal user then admin and super admin that particular role have access to uh, multiple apis okay so we need to de uh, design tables for this and provide each user to uh, particular access to particular that api so we can use this role and assign with respect to that okay so yeah uh, that's it from today's video okay if you have any questions please write down comment i will try to address that and i will add a uh, all resource link in a description go and check it out okay if you like our video gives us thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel okay uh, let's meet on a next video till then happy coding